So what we did the last couple of days was what? What did we? What were we talking about with our pacing things out loud? Vectors. vectors. What about the vectors? Vector uh, addition. What what specific property was like our key point? Commutative. Good. So the vector addition is commutative. And what we remember is that what we can do then, because you can add vectors in any order, is you can gather them up. And when you gather them up into like the north-south, which are opposite of each other, and the east-west, which are opposite of each other, when you gather them up like that, you can just use sign numbers to get a final answer and do things in one step rather than the whole deal where you have to actually follow all the directions, tail to tip, tail to tip, tail to tip, and then draw your resultant. The resultant is just the same when you put the things together like that. And that was our main point from what we did yesterday. So now we have to start applying it and start taking a look at what it looks like when you subtract vectors or when you use them in various different word problem scenarios. So this is what's a little tricky. So we want to make sure that we get a good understanding of that. In order to do one of the things, actually to wrap up uh, section one, is that we need to visit or revisit the law of cosines. Uh, some of you may have heard of the law of cosines, some may not have, but even if you have never heard of it, what you can notice about the law of cosines is it looks almost, it looks very, very similar to what? If I block out the second part, what does that mean? Good. It looks very close to the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But in a Pythagorean theorem, what does the angle have to equal? The, the One of the angles has to be 90. So it has to be a right triangle. And A and B would be the legs that are around that 90 degree angle. So when you don't have a 90 degree angle, we have the law of cosines that puts this extra little bit on here to handle what happens when the angle that's between the two legs is not a, a right angle. Now think about it though for a minute, when you have the cosine of 90 degrees, if we were to just really quickly calculate the cosine of 90 degrees, let's make sure I'm on, um, make sure my mode is on degrees. And those of you who've done anything with the trigonometry with the circles would have a better sense of what the cosine of 90 degrees is, but just so we can get this uh, cosine 90 what we find out is that that equals zero. Okay. And so since the cosine of 90 is zero, what happens is that when you have 90 degrees, this part drops out and you're left with the Pythagorean theorem. So this really could be used in any case, but 90 degrees, you just don't think about this ending part. So minus two AB cosine theta. And it's good for finding a magnitude. It's a little bit trickier to use when finding a direction. So we usually reorganize things so we don't have to use law of cosines. And we can go back to sine cosine tangent, uh, the trig ratios to find that. So let's take a, a minute here to write down this question and think it through. You're walking and you walk 100 meters and then turn 38 degrees to your right. So you're walking along and then what you're actually doing, let me see if I can make a you, a, a person here out of this. Let's say we've got this. Okay, so here you are. I've never tried to do this this way. So this is with the uh, recording here, this is a little bit different. So you're walking along and then you turn 38 degrees to your right. So your body would turn like that. Does that make sense? I look up for a second. Okay, so you're walking along, you walk 100 meters, and you turn 38 degrees to your right. So you're swiveling your body like this, and then you continue on in your path. All right? 
So when we draw this out so you can see it, it looks something like this. You walk your 100 meters, you turn 38 degrees to your right. The 38 degrees is this angle right here. The 38 degrees is not from the horizontal. The 38 degrees is not that you turn back around this way. You're just making a gentle turn of 38 degrees and going off this way. So our 38's in here. I did not draw it to scale, but it does give you enough to be able to figure out a picture. So you've got your 100 meters. And you've got your 50 meters. And you've got your 38 degrees right here. And you're trying to figure out the distance from here to here. You're essentially trying to find R in this problem. But right now we don't have a missing piece. We don't have our theta. Our theta is the number of degrees that's inside the triangle. So how do we find this number of degrees inside the triangle? Anybody remember? Good. So 180 minus 38, as uh, Dylan said, and as Corey pointed out, the Ys of the thing. So 180 minus 38, all right, gives us 142 degrees. So 142 degrees, when you finally fill it in, in your different spots, A is going to be 100, B is going to be 50, and then theta is going to be 142. It's not going to be the, uh, it's not going to be the 38. So you have to make a sketch out. The sketch helps you to draw the picture. There are some things that you can assume in geometry, such as uh, the idea of a linear pair. And then sketching out the picture helps you to solve it. So I'm going to give everybody a second to work that out, and then we'll take a look at the answer. Yeah, our mode's on degrees. So we're going to make sure we're going to go through and we're going to calculate this. Just the easiest thing to do is put all this in your calculator all at once. Be very careful with the steps because they can fool you. So just please make sure that you're careful as you put things in. So 50 squared plus 100 squared minus 2 times 50 times 100 and then times cosine of 142. Okay, this is the best thing to do with this. It's the most elegant because it's all there like that. That gives us roughly that. And then if we if we need to finish it off by taking the square root, we would do second square root of the answer. And you can pick up the answer with the second of the negative. Hold on a second. And there we get 142.7. That's close to your 143. Uh, second entry will give you your, your second of the enter. We'll give you your history, and you can go back and see. Second, second enter, because the entry, second entry, and that'll give you the history one thing at a time. So I have 142.8, and let's see if we can nail that down for you. Hold on a second. There we go. It's a little bit harder when it's not 90, but, um, or it's harder to use when you're trying to find the number of degrees, I should say. So we have other methods that we're going to take a look at. 142.8 equals the number of meters from tail of the first to tip of the last. It's the resultant factor. So the result of what you did when you walked 100 meters, turned 38 degrees to your right, and then kept on walking, is that you ended up 142, almost 143 meters from where you started. And that's that. Now there's another thing that's 
uh, useful to calculate in some cases. And we'll use this sometimes when we're dealing with relative motion, and it is um, the idea of subtracting vectors. Remember, delta means change in. So if you take the later one minus the earlier one, it's the same as add the opposite, which you might say, okay, well, wait, we learned that a really, really long time ago in pre-algebra with the whole add the opposite thing. But the issue is, is that when you have vectors, okay, say I have, this is vector one, so here's another one, here's a vector for vector one. So I wanna add this vector, and then I wanna subtract v0, I wanna subtract the earlier one, because earlier it was going this way uh, at that speed, and then afterwards it was going this direction at this speed, so the change is the later one minus the earlier one. Minus is simply take the vector and turn it the opposite direction. So here's minus. So here's the later one, and I'm going to add that to the opposite. So later minus earlier gives us a change vector that looks like that. So later minus earlier is later plus the opposite of the earlier, and it gives you tail of the first to tip of the last um, as far as pictorially what that looks like to subtract vectors. So it's not always a simple plus and minus. So we do have to keep in mind what this delta means. If you just have forward and backward as your directions, it's much easier, but this add the opposite idea might help you out a lot when you have to think about taking a vector and then adding it to its opposite. So a vector plus its opposite gives you a result, tail of the first to tip of the last. And that's not drawn perfectly, but you get the idea, hopefully, with moving those graphics around for you. Okay. I'll just move them back so we can talk about them later if need be. And that's what it looks like. So you should write that part into your notes that delta V is this result right here of taking V1 minus V0. And it gives you that particular result. I believe our time is really close to being up. There it is. So we are going to have to wrap this up for today. We do have a, a motion lab to work on, so I need to I need to decide. We'll see how many people are present tomorrow as far as whether we do it tomorrow or a different day, because it is a really, really important uh, piece that I'd like you to see if possible. I do have a video camera, so that might possibly work also. So those that missed it, we miss you. And... We hope that you're either feeling better or on your way back safely. Signing off for now.